Hi, welcome to the video on introduction to MapReduce. MapReduce is a very strong parallel processing framework which takes advantage of scaling out or you can say division of work. Instead of running a process on a single machine, MapReduce makes the data processing distributed so that your computation is not performed on a single machine. Essentially, you take advantage of the power of the collection of machines. The collection of machines, sometimes called as nodes, form a cluster. And if you keep on adding more machines or nodes to your cluster, you increase the overall strength and capacity of the cluster. And if you don't require that enough, that much capacity, you can easily remove some of the existing nodes. Let's talk about MapReduce, like what it does and how does the flow of operations look like. Let's start with one example of getting the maximum temperature. Let's say we have a file. This is a CSV file where the first field is the full date. The second field is the zip code. And the third field is the temperature on that date at that zip code. So there are lots of entries. I have taken some of them, some handful entries from there. And you can see for uh, the year two, 2020, there are certain records. And similarly for the year 2019 and 18 records are present in the file. Our challenge or our problem over here is to find out the maximum temperature corresponding to each year. Let's talk about how to, how to address this in Python. In Python, what we can do is, start with a dictionary which is empty. This dictionary will contain the key as the year and value as the maximum temperature of the year seen so far. So we are going to iterate through this file one by one and we will be keeping track of the maximum temperature seen so far for each year in this dictionary. And then we start to read the file and iterate through the content one by one and we parse the values of uh, temperature and year. Afterwards, if the year is not present in the dictionary, which simply means that this year is seen for the first time, we consider that temperature to be the maximum temperature so far. Else, if the year already exists in the dictionary, we grab the existing temperature and then we make a comparison like the current record the current temperature for that year, is it more than the existing value? If it is, so whichever is more, either the existing temperature or the current temperature for that year, we put that in the variable current maximum temperature. So after this if else block, our current maximum temperature contains the maximum temperature of the year seen so far and eventually we update that in the dictionary with that particular year. Afterwards, we can print out what is the maximum temperature for each year seen in the file. So the flow of operation looks like this. Say uh, on the left side, there will be input records. On the right side, we will be seeing how the values or how the state of the dictionary evolves as and when new records arrive. So for initially, there will be empty dictionary as we have seen. For the first record, the year is 2020, the temperature is 14. This year does not exist in the dictionary. So our dictionary will contain one entry for the year 2020 with temperature 14, which is the maximum seen so far. For the next record, the year is 2019 and the temperature is 15. This year is also not present in the dictionary. So a new entry with key 2019 and value 15 will be added. The next record, which is year 2020. Now for the year 2020, we already have an entry present in the dictionary and the value corresponding to that entry is uh, uh, 14 and the current value which is 16 is more than the existing value. So this will update the dictionary with the year 2020 having the maximum temperature which is 16 seen so far and now you can understand as and when new records arrive this dictionary will get uh, updated now let's say a new record comes with year 2019 with temperature 13 and the existing value of uh, temperature is 15 which is which is already higher so it will have essentially no impact on the 
state of the dictionary. And this is how the dictionary is going to evolve. And finally, when you are done scanning through all the lines, you will have the maximum temperature for each year. Let's try to see this quickly in action. This is uh, around Python. So let me show you how the file looks like in my local. The file is at uh, temp location, weather.csv. This is the file we, are, we will be dealing with. And uh, this is the Python program we are going to run. So I'm going to run entire program together uh, just to uh, save time because we have gone through this line by line. So I go inside Python shell, run this program, and finally I have like for each year 2020 this is the maximum temperature and so for each and every year so this looks cool uh, not much not enough lines of code I think uh, five to six lines of the business logic is there and it works perfectly fine and solves our purpose but there are some challenges with this this is a single process application you can think of the way think of ways to multi-thread it uh, but essentially you will be working on a single machine and you won't be having enough power if you go to higher data volume. The first challenge is if there is a large file that may not fit on your local machine, think of a petabyte scale. Even if you have found out a way to read a large file, that is you don't read the file entirely at once, you read the file uh, some, some, some something like block by block and the file is in S3 or HDFS. So it, essentially you have figured out a way to read the file. Then also you won't have the, the, you won't have a higher speed of execution because your processing will be running on a single machine and you are limited by uh, the processing capabilities of a single machine. You may also not have enough memory to keep the dictionary. So if you see, we are maintaining a dictionary. Here we are keeping track of only year and the corresponding temperature. But think of a way where you have to figure out the maximum temperature corresponding to every day. And last 10 years of uh, data will have like 3000 days. And this can explode further if you have to find out the maximum temperature for every day and zip code combination. There could be millions of zip code across the world. And it can further explode if you have to figure out what is the maximum temperature for every R and every zip code combination. So there could be a point not that far where you will kind of uh, f start to face the out of memory exceptions because your dictionary can't be kept in memory with all the content. So we need to have uh, figure out a better way to perform complex computations on data which is of high volume, like think of a petabyte scale or even further. Here comes the importance of MapReduce. MapReduce is a parallel processing framework which provides distributed computation. Here, instead of working on a single machine, you work on a cluster of many machines and you distribute the processing across multiple processes. These processes can be running on one or different machines. And there are two stages to it one is the map stage and one is the reduce stage and there is one stage in between which is called as a shuffle so we'll talk about this map uh, reduce and shuffle but before we go ahead let's talk about one more thing if you have to translate the previous use case of finding the maximum temperature for every year in something like a sql this is your sql this is how your sql will look like you select the year maximum of temperature from some table and you group by year. And that, that's how you get it. So here we can say that this year is the aggregate key or the grouping key and the temperature is the grouped key or aggregated key. In map phase, what we do is, this is very important to understand what is your aggregate key and what is your aggregated key in map reduce. In map phase, you read from the input data set and there, could be multiple mappers which read on different subset of the data. So loosely understanding if your data has say 100 lines, you can run say five mappers where each mapper is reading 20 lines. A very, very simplistic situation, but it will help you understand that different mappers operate on mutually exclusive subset of the actual data. 
and mapper outputs some key and value this key has to be your aggregate key and this value has to be uh, the 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 field which you want to measure or the field which you want to aggregate in this example our key can look like year and the value will look like temperature there is a shuffle phase so think of a situation where you have multiple mappers running each mapper outputs key and value if you have to aggregate the value you will have to collect all the values across the output of all the mappers which have the same key here to get the maximum temperature for the year you need to collect all the temperature values for a given year and these temperature values can be in the output of different mappers this shuffle phase is something which helps us collect all the values for each key and it sends it to the next phase which is reduce in the reduce phase you have a key and you have a list of values you can then operate on the list of values to derive any statistics you want you can op you can get a mean you can get a count you can get a standard deviation or well you can get max min average all the mathematical computations if you want to do you can do that in the reduce phase once you have got all the values we will see this uh, vi visually very soon but uh, this math phase is something which you have the full control to write the logic this reduce phase is also which is under the application developer control in a map reduce framework in hadoop map reduce essentially this shuffle is something which you don't have to worry based on the output key of your map phase shuffle will take care of collecting all the values for the same key together let's so the flow of operations are very straightforward there's a map phase so which uh, reads the input produces the key value output which is then collected by the shuffle and uh, all the values for the same key are pushed to the next stage which is reduce reduce gets a key and a list of values and generates some aggregated output let's take two examples back to back the first example is about getting maximum temperature which we have already seen in python how to do that in map reduce let's say we have a file this is one portion of the file we have already seen the file this is a csv file containing weather information and say it has got uh, three sections if you have understanding of hdfs understand like these are three hdfs blocks for the same file for each section or let's say for each block of the file there will be a mapper which will be called mapper is going to read the input block and is going to produce the key value here our intention is to get the maximum temperature for each year so our output key will be the year and output value will be the temperature and this will be same across all mappers so all these three mappers will operate in parallel now you can think of a situation if you have a very very large file you can have thousands or even more number of mappers all working parallelly and producing the result in in in, in parallel essentially if you have say 1000 mappers theoretically speaking you get like 1000 times speed benefit and once you have uh, once the mapper has produced this key value as output there is a shuffle phase in between which will collect together all the values for the key and send it to reduce phase again so we have a parallelism on the map side we can choose number of mappers by tuning the configurations you can also control the number of reducers so in this example we have three mappers and two reducers and uh, which key will go to which reducer that is controlled by an internal component called as partitioner let's not talk about it the essential part is one key will have all its value collected together and sent to one reducer there will never be a case that one key which is here in this case will have some values in one reducer and some in the other no that's that's the guarantee you will get in map reduce and once you have the key and the list of values here you can easily iterate over the values and find out the maximum and this is how your result will look like from the first reducer and this is the result will look like from second reducer each reducer is going to operate in parallel and produce the output file which can be inside the same directory so what did you see you distribute the load of reading the file and performing the aggregation you can control the parallelism and that will give you immense speed benefit and this map reduce is something which has already been battle proof it's been there for 
all about two decades overall and more than uh, more than one decade in the commercial distributions it has solved the problem of uh, performing complex computations on large data scale let's take one more example of map reduce and see what like how can we generate word count again let's say we have a file which has got some sentences here the sentences are very simple i have kept the name of some fruits but think of a situation where you have each line and you want to know the frequency of every word how many times a word has appeared in the file needless to say here the word is going to be the key because that's what you want to aggregate but what do you want you want to generate the count so you want to count you want to sum together all the occurrences of the word in the map side what we can do is we can generate the word as the key and one as the value so you read the record line by line you uh, extract words from it by using some split function or applying some regex and for each word you output uh, word and one as the key and value respectively your shuffle will ensure that for each word all the values here the values are ones just list of ones will go to the reducer and on the reduce side you just add together all the ones and generate the value the value output is for each word what is the frequency of that word again if you have a large data set you can again use more number of mappers and more number of reducers to distribute the load in a more even manner so we have seen that map reduce is a very interesting data processing uh, framework which works on parallel processing let's take a look at some of the interesting features or the power of map reduce MapReduce processes massive amount of data by using commodity hardware. You don't need a very specialized architecture or a, a machine type. You can work on machine which has got few gigs of RAM and few gigs of storage. Even if there is a failure in one of the mapper or one of the reducer, MapReduce will retry it some number of times. So if there is any temporary failure happening because of any network issues or machine going down, then it is it will automatically recover without you even noticing it there is also a concept of a speculative execution if uh, one of the mapper or one of the reducer uh, is running slow then a duplicate copy of the mapper gets launched so that whichever mapper completes first the output is taken and the good thing is you can control this behavior so you uh, can benefit from this optimization if one of the tasks gets hung in the process. You have uh, access to lots of configuration which can further customize and tune the MapReduce framework. Again, you don't have to worry about what is your cluster manager, who allocates the resources to your mappers or reducers. Uh, there is a very loose coupling with it in map reduce in the earlier versions of map reduce there was something like job tracker in the new releases there is a yarn which uh, helps run map reduce but again uh, yarn is not the only one resource manager you can use any other cluster manager like mesos for example so a map reduce uh, is very good where you just have to worry about writing the logic for the map and reduce don't worry about shuffle that the framework will give it to you and uh, you also get some of the optimizations like a speculative execution you also benefit from data locality that is run the mapper as close to the actual data as possible you transport the code as close to the data as possible rather than moving the data to your code so that kind of uh, network balance uh, i mean you have the optimizations in the network speed as well network transfer sorry but MapReduce has got certain limitations and let's highlight some of them the output of a map phase is written to a local disk uh, which is like the intermediate output and the final output of the reduce is written to some kind of a stable storage like hdfs for example so map reduce has got a very high usage on the disk local or hdfs and this increases the latency of the application so on the one side it makes it very robust and very powerful for the batch processes 
but because of this increased latency it's not optimized for iterative and interactive queries also uh, some of the jobs like real time and streaming jobs they cannot tolerate this uh, increased latency so map reduce is again not very much suitable for streaming or real time operations in iterative processing um, many of the machine learning algorithms have to iterate some graph algorithms also have to iterate so what they do is they take the input process some uh, process it produce the result and that result is not the not the best in the first uh, shot itself so you have to improve on it uh, if you have some idea about machine learning think of something like gradient descent where you slowly move towards the sweet spot similarly for interactive queries you you want the result to be as quick as possible and in real time and in streaming processing again there uh, a latency of few seconds itself is considered to, to be very high you would like the result to be there within milliseconds and for that use case map reduce unfortunately is not designed for also map reduce is a very uh, raw processing framework uh, if you want to do some kind of uh, uh, specialized processing for example running a sql or doing machine learning then you have to learn some new framework like if you have to perform some sql operations you can do hive which will translate your sql like queries into map reduce jobs for performing machine learning you can do something uh, like mahout and for graph processing you can take advantage of giraffe all of these components internally use map reduce but again there is a learning for each one of them if you want to explore so there is no consistency of the usage across each of one of them although they all internally use map reduce so that's uh, the other drawback with map reduce in the next video we are going to introduce a spark and we will try to see how what what exactly spark it uh, a spark is and how it uh, handles the challenges uh, imposed by map reduce at the same time taking benefits of uh, map reduce thank you for watching this video